What up fam? Welcome back to 88-Bit Tech. I'm AJ and today we're building an all-white AliExpress PC for the most part. A lot of the main components are going to be coming from AliExpress and then just stuff I have lying around to fill in the space. Let's take a look at the AliExpress parts. So we're starting off with this very professional power supply. What could go wrong? So this is the Julong Fengbao 650 watt power supply from AliExpress that I got on sale. It's all white power supply for 41 US dollars or 61 AUD. Now normally I would not recommend you get a power supply off of AliExpress and that hasn't changed. I still don't recommend it. However, I have tested one of the other power supplies from Julong Fengbao. It's the fully modular 850 watt unit and I've tested it for a couple of months using it in my test bench with a bunch of different systems that I have built and that unit has been running strong and completely fine for the last couple of months with different motherboards and different graphics cards and different systems all together. So I wanted to try out and give the smaller version, the 650 watts, not fully modular, but it is completely white for our semi all white AliExpress build. I have tested it off camera already with a power supply tester and all the values are well within range. I haven't tested it in the system yet because I haven't built it yet, but we're going to go ahead and do that shortly. On to the next thing. Next up, we have this highly rated Machinist B450 motherboard that is all white. We paid 42 US dollars or about 64 AUD. Oddly enough, it did come with a red SATA cable. Odd choice by Machinist to include a red one. Unfortunately, I've got plenty of black ones, but I actually might keep this cable in there because you'll see in a second why. But pretty bare bones here. We've got a IO shield. There you go. Maybe I'll bring it in closer so you can get a better look. It's a pretty bare bones. It's got everything we need though. No VRM, but you're going to see in a second here, the CPU that we're using, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Pretty clean, pretty small, but I, it'll do just fine. For the RAM, we've got a Jazer kit. Now, I am not a stranger to these. I have purchased many of these Jazer kits and they work extremely well. It's a set of Crystal RGB, ARGB RAM that you can control with your motherboard software or a third party software or it's the software that uh, Jazer has for these sticks. So this is a 16 gigabyte kit at CL18, 3200 mega transfers per second. So plenty fast and all white as well. So it's going to be pretty cool for this build. I paid 32 US dollars for this or 48 Australian dollars. For the graphics card, we have this. Don't mind the sticker. This is a bricked RX 580 that I reflashed that I that I actually unbricked in a previous video, link to that somewhere in the video here. But this is an RX 588 gigabyte 2048 SP, and this is gonna be our GPU that's gonna power the system here. Unfortunately, it is not white. However, it has red fans, which is pretty exciting because we have a red SATA cable that I think will accent this quite nicely. I am gonna vinyl wrap the black frame here as well as the back plate so we can get a really nice look to it and it'll be ready for gaming. So it is now fixed and I'm gonna use this as the GPU for this system. Oh, and I, I bought this last year before the, the crazy price hike with the RX 580s on AliExpress. I paid $52 for this USD or 79 AUD about last year when I picked this up. But it is working fine now and I tested it with a benchmark that was running for pretty much an entire day and it was all good, no artifacting. So that's gonna be our GPU. For our main drive, I've got a Samsung SSD that I picked up locally off of a sale. So this is a 256 gigabyte Gen 3x4 SSD that I was able to pick up for nine US dollars or 14 AUD. So crazy good deal. We're going to be supporting the storage on this system with a free Western Digital one terabyte hard drive. Not the greatest solution, but I had it lying around, so I'm just going to throw it in the system because why not? For the CPU, we've got a Ryzen 5 5500 that I was able to pick up locally for a crazy good deal of 44 US dollars or 70 Australian dollars. And this is going to be the brains of the operation and should have no problem on this budget board. It is not 
super thermal intensive of a CPU, so we should be completely fine with this Rotanium RGB cooler that I picked up locally that does actually have white fins. And that's the build. Oh wait, almost forgot. Of course, this is all going into a case. And while I wanted to get a AliExpress all white case, cause they have them, they are not cheap. It is not economically responsible for me to do that. So what I did was I picked up an all white case that I could get uh, here locally in Australia from MSY, paid 69 Australian dollars, giggity, or 46 USD. And it comes with three ARGB fans. So which is pretty cool. It's the Thermaltake View 170 TG ARGB fish tank case, guys. Pretty dang cool. Not too bad. Let's get to building. And you've seen too many builds all the time, so we're just gonna speed this up. So it's running absolutely fine, this combination. Next thing we gotta do is change our vinyl up that graphics card to match the white theme. So I completely forgot to record, but the vinyl on the GPU is finished and it doesn't look half bad. I didn't vinyl everything uh, just because, you know what, if they do want to swap this out, you can remove it and you're not even going to see the bottom, so why does it matter? I got all the important bits basically and there's a little bit of black in there, but that's okay too. But this took way longer than I thought. Might as well have spray painted it. So it's been a couple of weeks and the all white AliExpress PC is still going, maybe not as strong as I st first started. The dinky $2 rainbow cooler that I got here locally is just not enough even to cool the Ryzen 5 5500, which is not a super hot CPU by any means. This is just a really crappy cooler. So what I've done, I've ordered a AliExpress cooler that it's on route. I did order a different all white one to put in here, which was actually this guy. Unfortunately, like a dum-dum, I didn't check what socket this was for. And I don't know if you guys can see here. I took it out and tried to install it and realized very quickly that this does not fit with our B450 motherboard, all white motherboard that we got from AliExpress. It is in fact an LGA 1700 cooler. This is a really cool cooler that I have used in the past before. It has a nifty little temperature reading, but it would paired really nice and made this build look really cool. I could have sent it back, but instead I am actually going to do another all white build centered around this cooler. And I got it for a, a good deal, so I figured I might as well keep it. All the AM4 versions of this are sold out everywhere. At least in Australia, you can't get it. Now we're waiting for another cooler to come in from AliExpress. The other issue, you may remember this card from a couple of videos ago, if you've been watching my channel, where I unbricked a GPU. This was the Soyo RX 580 8GB 2048 SP. This was actually the first graphics card in my first ever build on the channel. Also my first graphics card in my own PC that I built in Australia. But I bricked it and I unbricked it in this video here. Um, somewhere here you can check it out. Fix the card. Unfortunately, it's still not 100% stable. I run a bunch of tests on it and while it will play games fine, it plays Cyberpunk just fine, it does experience the occasional artifact crash. And I've tried everything. I've tried undervolting it. I've tried uh, reducing the clock speeds. I think the card is just on its way out. And I spent quite a bit of time vinyling it. So you can see it to cut out all these individual holes on the back. The card still works. It's a fully functioning card, has no problems like with watching videos or anything like that. It's just that in gaming, especially more intense gaming, there is a potential that it will crash. However, it does actually stay pretty stable in most games. But I'm going to be selling this PC. I can't in good conscience put an artifacting GPU in the PC. So what I did is looked on AliExpress for a replacement RX 580. Unfortunately, RX 580 8GB have gone up in price and right now, in my opinion, they are not a good value. You might as well get something locally. The prices have gone up for these because they're starting to dwindle down in stock. Legendary card, amazing card, still looks absolutely beautiful, like it's new. Instead, we got an upgrade. Locally, I was able to pick up a really good deal on a GTX 1660 Super for, get this, 90 Australian dollars or 62 US dollars. 
that's only 10 US dollars more than the price that I paid for this RX 580. So for $10 more, we're getting way more performance. Even though it has two gigabytes less, the 1660 Super is still a, a really good card in 1080p gaming. And even you can even stretch it into 1440p gaming. I tested it and it was possible uh, with a couple of obviously using uh, upscalers and techno uh, frame gen tech to get it there. But we're currently running a stress test on it right now. One uh, thing, this was a mining card and it was worse for wear. I should have recorded it. It was covered in rust, caked in dust. I took it apart, cleaned it up, it took me about six hours to clean up and, and then remove all the rust from at least all the parts that I could, but it turned out really well. Initially, I tested it at the seller's house and it was running heaven benchmark at 75 degrees Celsius. After I applied new thermal paste, it gave it a proper cleaning, like took a brush to all the components with 90% isopropyl alcohol and it brought it down 20 degrees difference, huge difference. It's working so well now. I cleaned all the fans. It's a solid upgrade. So now we just have to wait for the cooler. As you can see here too, guys, look at that. That 1660 Super is nice and cool, sitting at 59 degrees. And another added benefit is it actually runs at a lower wattage than the RX 580 8GB 2048 SP. So we're getting more performance with less power. So it's more power efficient. Overall, it's just a better GPU. And like I said, for $62, that is a steal. I took the stickers off the Thermaltake fans in there to make it look uh, more cohesive, as well as purchased a RGB controller so I could control the fans in here now. So now we have fully ARGB fans controlled by that controller, also from AliExpress. So my replacement cooler has come in. Only issue is it's black for this all white PC. So the solution is vinyl wrapping it. So I did end up putting some vinyl on the fins, on some of the fans there. On video, it looked look quite choppy. It actually has a pretty cool effect IRL. The temperatures are actually completely the exact same. And it's just a bit of vinyl, vinyl sticker. So if, I mean, if anyone really wants to take it off, you could just remove it since it is just a sticker. It is an absolutely clean looking build at the end here. Now that we have the all-white AliExpress build complete with all the used parts completely torn down and refurbished as well as vinyl wrapping galore, let's go ahead and test it in some games. For a 1080p full screen, we're on the low preset with field of view 100, everything else set to off except for lens flare, motion blur is off, everything else set to the low preset. 1080p, we're getting 83 average frames per second. You do, we do get some dips in there into like 52 there for a second, but for the most part, this is going to be a fairly solid 60 FPS experience. Let's start cranking up the settings. This is YOLO it and go all the way to ultra settings. Keep that off. And we're going to turn off these features because I don't like them. Everything else is going to stay on. But now we are in ultra presets. Let's see what this combo can do. So at ultra preset, an above a well above 30 fps experience so averaging currently about 45 but you can see we're dipping there it's going to get lower when you get on a bike here too so let's let's go ahead and have a bit of a drive around and see how low it actually gets dipping into 37 36 we do drop down to low 30s here we're about to get to a pretty intensive part of the game here oh we do dip below 30 there so i go to 28 on ultra settings on this combo. So it is going to drop below 30 on ultra settings, but still not terrible. Getting some shimmering there, even in native, but still not too bad. I mean, it, it does feel heavy here because we're at such a low frame rate. Let's do something to improve that. So. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on some resolution scaling. I've done a separate video on this, but XESS is actually the best upscaler in the game for these low end cards. Unless you have real DLSS, that's gonna be better than XESS, but XESS 
super sampling 1.3 is going to give you the most stable image. You're not going to get as high of frames as with other upscalers, but it's pretty close. We'll set it to quality. We're going to keep frame generation off so we don't have to reset. But let's see what that does for us. So that takes us, oh man, the game looks so much better <laughs> with that upscaling. I don't know what it did, but it just looks so much cleaner and it feels smoother as well. That frame time graph is quite nice, but we're now close to 60 FPS and it feels so much nicer. I mean, it's, we're still getting dips here. Yeah, let's drive around this section just because it is the most intense area, one of the most. I saw 46 there, 60 FPS hitting there, so averaging 56 there, but still not bad, guys. And this is at, with no frame generation either, well, barely well, no ghosting experience with XCSS. Let's turn on DLSS frame generation, or actually what it is, FSR 3.1 frame generation. And of course, we do have to restart. Thank you, CD Projekt Red. And we're back, and crazy enough, the frame time actually smooths out once you have FSR 3.1 frame gen on. We're getting over 100 FPS with XCSS, ultra settings, and XCSS set to quality. And check out that performance. It's so smooth. It feels so good, and the game looks great. But, yeah, let's get on here. So we're at 85 there, 83, 82. Do we get into the 70s? Look at that. With DLS or with XESS, we get a lot less shimmering in that. Even in native, we get more shimmering. But the game looks stunning, guys. This is a 1660 Super. It has only 6 gigabytes and a Ryzen 5 5500. And we're getting, I would consider this high refresh rate gaming. in the 90s. If I drop this down to medium, I'm sure we would get even more or get get closer to that 120, maybe even 140 frames per second. And temperatures look amazing. GPU is topping out at a 59 degrees C. CPU now that we've got the new cooler in there is at 53 degrees C. degrees C and GPU is not going higher than 59 degrees. It's locked at 60. That's amazing. Let's jump into another game. Okay, so I wanted to test it out on a game that would really kind of push this combo to its limit. Even though it's been optimized since its release, it is definitely still a difficult title to run for this older hardware. We are on the lowest settings right now, native, and we're just getting 30 FPS. With It's going to dip below 30 for sure, but let's see. Yep, so lowest settings, no, uh, no upscaling at all. What we're going to do, keep it on low settings, but we're going to turn on SR3, and we're going to set it to quality, which is 67%. Dynamic res, let's shut that off. 40s now, gave us about 12 to 15 more FPS. I mean, we're getting into the 50s in certain, some areas. Let's do what we probably should do is turn on frame generation. This is normal FSR3 frame generation, by the way, and normal FSR3 upscaling. But when we do that on low settings, it does take us to 76 and it does feel so much better, smoother, and the frame time graph actually smooths out as well. Be more than happy to play with low settings and the game still looks pretty good. All right, let's see what we can do to get it to 60 FPS. Let's run it on high. We are just below 60 with high, so you probably need to set it to, to medium and still get 60 frames per second all the time. So playing it on medium settings with FSR 3 set to quality and frame generation enabled, and you get a pretty playable experience with this. Temperatures also look fine on the GPU and CPU, about mid 50s. And usage is also quite good. 97% on the GPU, 60% on the CPU. 
solid pairing. That power consumption too is something that's really nice to see. You're getting this kind of performance. I mean, an RX 580 is going to consume more power, look at less performance. And this CPU is clocking at its max boost of 4.25 at half of its TDP. Here is a summary of some of the other games that I tested here at 1080p. As you can see, we get a pretty respectable performance in the high settings and ultra settings across these games. There you have it. A lot of time and energy went into making this all-white AliExpress PC viable. With a lot of issues down the road, ended up having to swap the GPU to a better GPU for only $10 more. So that's actually a steal. Vinyl wrapping everything and then the original cooler that I had in there not working quite well. That wasn't from AliExpress. So I got another one from AliExpress and now it is working except it wasn't working with the original software that I had to get a, a, some beta softwares from the actual developers themselves. But it is working now. Everything is working beautifully. Temps are fine and the build looks absolutely stunning in my opinion. And all of that for 314 US dollars or 468 Australian dollars. That is an absolutely amazing deal. It's a mix of new and used parts about half and half. Don't be afraid of mining GPUs. You can get some really good deals and if you're willing to put in the hard work. It did take me six hours to completely take apart that CPU, soak it parts in vinegar to remove some rust, get some isopropyl with, with a soft comb toothbrush and go into town on all the parts there. But it was well worth it because now we have an, an amazing, beautifully crafted PC that hopefully someone in Oz will take advantage of. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.